when you're sat there on the porcelain throne, as you might be right now watching this film, do you ever find yourself wondering what's actually happening down there below you? Now, I'm not talking about why does sweet corn always come out whole, although that actually could be a good Brit Lab film in the future. No, I'm talking about afterwards. Where does everything go when you flush? Well, whether you are insatiably curious or just a little bit gross, don't you worry, I've got you covered. We're going to follow poop on its magical journey from flush to finish. Now, first things first, immediately after you flush, everything in the toilet disappears. This is all done through the power of water. And you don't actually need a fancy flushing system. You can actually flush your toilet just by suddenly chucking a bucket of water in. The contents of your toilet are sent off through the pipes and importantly past the U-Bend. This bend of pipe was invented by a London watchmaker in the 1770s. It's constantly full of water and it prevents nasty smells and gases from the pipes beyond stinking up your bathroom. In rural areas, waste may go to a home sewage treatment facility, a septic tank. Here, solids settle and the water is filtered and left to seep into a drain field in the ground. But in the cities, waste flows into larger sewers beneath the streets and from there to sewage treatment works. The first city-wide system of sewers was built in Hamburg in 1843. Over in London, though, we were dumping more than 400,000 tonnes of sewage into the River Thames each day. In 1858, a great stink closed Parliament and the government was forced to react. 1,300 miles of Victorian mega sewers and embankments were built to deal with the problem. And we still use some of them now. Cheers Queen V for that. When sewer pipes reach the treatment works, they're first screened to remove large objects that shouldn't be there. And they found nappies, bricks, a pair of false teeth, and I'm guessing a few phones that you've accidentally dropped down the loo. I think they've got two of mine. The next step is the primary treatment, where just like what happens in a septic tank, solids are allowed to settle and the hopefully cleaner water is carried away. And that leftover sludge is collected. That stuff is often sent to landfill, but some companies actually use it to make energy, either by using bacteria to break it down and then burning the gases that they give off, or by compressing the solid matter into bricks and burning them. Yep. You could be heating your home with burning poop. Wonderful. This primary treatment removes about half of the solids, organic matter and bacteria in the water. In some plants, they now add chlorine to kill anything living and just release the water out into the environment. Ideally though, the liquid passes into the secondary treatment stage where kind, selfless bacteria in large aerated tanks are encouraged to break down the remaining organic matter in the liquid. After a while, the results are pumped into settling tanks again and the bacteria, their jobs done, are removed. The third, tertiary stage is different in different places, but it can involve sand filtration beds, added chemicals, or actively removing the phosphorus and nitrogen that could act as a fertilizer. Finally, the now clean water returns to rivers and streams, and eventually it probably returns to your body. In drought-stricken California, they're even looking to shorten the distance, moving recycled wastewater directly back into the drinking water system. Cheers, California.